awareness of the possibility that a man can be an abuser and all that, like, you know, most men are on good behavior regarding that. Most men are, most men are afraid to hit a woman. They'll let a woman hit them because they know they have no other recourse. Um, oh, wow. Uh, Okay, I'm just curious here. Now, this, this video, like I said, this video is to the Femetheist, you know, Dr. Claw. I got a few videos she needs to see. And she needs, okay, now, Femetheist, I need a response from you about what goes on in this video right here, okay? Now, I'm Manslave, and I'm, I'm asking this to you, the Femetheist, what your response is to what happens in this video. anti-violence campaign hmm. so I was just wondering you know You know, I was going to save this for... Now, now, Prometheus, I want to see what your reaction is to that. Um, because sometimes that stuff does happen. Now, um, let's get back to this. ...yourself as a human being, and you go, yeah, he's a classic abuser. They're never sorry. They push off the blame of why it happened. They love the fact that the person that... Touchdown. Hashtag I don't cry myself to sleep, not because I'm a Jets fan. Jenny then tweets something that I've thought the entire time. I have zero respect for a person who seems unapologetic for the terrible crime he committed and shows no signs of changing. I mean, you just look at the situation and you look at the lack of, like, any legitimate trying to fix yourself as a human being and you go, yeah, he's a classic abuser. They're never sorry. They push off the blame of why it happened. They love the fact that the person that they abuse comes back to them. It gives them this power. And all of this boiled down to the last four tweets from Chris Brown. Just ask Rihanna if she mad. Already off to an amazing start. Back to life, ellipses. Team Breezy, no, I'm not upset. Just felt like entertaining the ignorance. These bitches crazy. That one is a fact, though. Bitches be crazy. And finally, further proved my point of how immature society is. Hashtag Carpe Diem 
him, you just need to stop using that. Like, I get it. Carpe diem. Seize the day. Seize the day as if it was Rihanna's throat and she said something back to you. Maybe that's the problem, Chris. You were so young back then when you beat a woman. Maybe you took Carpe Diem too literally. Maybe on that fateful night you would later undo by singing Man in the Mirror and crying in front of a group of people. You thought you had to literally seize the day and or possibly bite it and or, you know, smack it against the door. But soon after all those tweets, he then deleted his account. And I guess the main thing is good. I hate Chris Brown. Like, I don't actively think, man, I really hate Chris Brown, but he is a terrible person. I don't care if I lose subscribers for saying that. He may make catchy songs, but he is a shitty human being. And so many people are afraid to say that because there's so much back... Yeah, they're, well, they're, you know, you know, see, it's easy to say that about a man, but, like, who says it about a woman? I mean, see, even men will say that they hate men. You know, which, so, so which, which gender is, like, really hated, you know? Backlash from Team Breezy. I gotta make my money! Way back when it actually happened, I was doing a thing for MTV, and they cut that whole Chris Brown part out. And it reminded me of the importance of having this platform to be a voice for common sense. Then let's talk about the crazy news coming from the Associated Press that detectives in the Casey Anthony case overlooked evidence. This came out Sunday night, and apparently the evidence they overlooked was a Google search for foolproof suffocation on the day that Casey Anthony's daughter disappeared. And it's being reported that the reason this evidence might have been overlooked is that sheriff's investigators only pulled data entry from Internet Explorer and not Firefox, which is what she mainly used. Reportedly, over 1,200 Firefox entries, including foolproof suffocation, were completely overlooked. And it's being said, whoever conducted the Google search looked for the term foolproof suffocation, misspelling suffocation, and then clicked on an article about suicide that discussed taking poison and putting a bag over one's head. The browser then recorded activity on the social networking site MySpace, which was used by Casey Anthony, but not her father. And also, here's a part that's going to make you feel dirty. This search was actually found before the trial by a computer expert on Casey Anthony's defense. Her lead attorney, Jose Baez, was the first to mention this, and it was in his book. But in his book, he suggested that it was George Anthony who was thinking of how to kill himself because he found out that Kaylee drowned. And not what the state would have said, which was that Casey Anthony was trying to figure out how to kill her daughter, and then went on to her MySpace, which proved that it's her. And finding out this new information, obviously this does not condemn her. Everything is arguable, but you look at it and you're like, ah. Oh. It just reminds you that court lawyers, it's not about finding the right person, justice, anything. It's about winning, and that kind of kills me. And guys, that's everything I wanted to talk about on today's show. But it does bring us to the question of the day today, which is, what is the best thing you got on Black Friday, Cyber Monday? Okay, it's so irrelevant. Um, you know, and... <sighs> this video's getting too long anyway. Um, it's getting out of hand. Um, okay. Yep, Casey, Anth uh, Casey Anthony, of course. <laughs> Not guilty, they say. And, uh... Well... In double jeopardy. She probably won't be tried again. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, more violence. Okay, more violence. Uh, now, I wanted to do a video with the disposable human doing on this topic we talked about before. Alright. I'm just going to cover a couple things right here on the topic of Amber Portwood who is from the same state that I'm from and people like Amber Portwood are typical a former girlfriend was kinda like Amber Portwood in a few ways oh hello what's this elegant machine caressing my milk chocolate skin it's the best damn razor you've ever seen that's what it's the Braun electric razor and this is where we put them to the test what do you need to test a razor? BraunTestLabs.com Oh, there she goes. A Central Indiana reality TV star goes crazy in front of the cameras. This star of Teen Mom is now facing charges. She was made famous by starring in an MTV show on teen pregnancy. Amber Portwood faces three preliminary charges of battery. 24 Hour News 8's Jay Hermosinski talked to police about the investigation. So, Jay, has she been arrested? Well, no, Eric. Right now, those three charges are preliminary, filed by police. It will be up to the county prosecutor to decide whether or not to file formal charges. If that does happen, then a warrant will be issued for Portwood's arrest. Amber Portwood left her Anderson home saying nothing about the three battery charges filed by police. One of her neighbors had plenty to say. He isn't a fan. She got a man now. The chauffeur comes up and gets her and all that stuff. You know, she... She, she the goose found the golden egg. According to the probable cause affidavit, MTV videotape shows Portwood slapped, choked, pushed, threatened, punched, and kicked her ex-boyfriend Gary Shirley. 
Police say some of the incidents took place in the same room as their young daughter, Leah. In Indiana, that enhances a battery charge from a misdemeanor to a felony. In August and October of this year, police responded to two 911 calls from Portwood. She claimed she was being abused by her ex-boyfriend. He's a very abusive person, so I just gotta say that right up front. And while local media has mostly ignored the couple and their issues, national entertainment media outlets have been closely following every step. On a daily basis, yeah, we get, uh, I personally get probably anywhere from uh, 12 to 20 phone calls from the latter part of September up till and including today. Police say they started the investigation after viewers of the MTV show Teen Mom complained about Portwood's violent nature when it, come to her, when it came to her handling her ex-boyfriend. Police say that Portwood, her ex-boyfriend, and MTV have been cooperative with that investigation. Reporting live in Anderson, Jay Hermosinski, 24-Hour News 8. All right. Oh, there she goes. It's yeah, I um, actually heard that uh, the reason why Amber Portwood went off and, and started assaulting her boyfriend, Gary Shirley, is because um, he threatened to call CPS on her. And uh, now this here that you see, was caught on camera by MTV and was shown to America where a female displays violence on him. Uh, now me and the Disposable Human Doing, we watched some, some news reports in which her story is kind of uh, contradictory. Um, you know, the events of it. Let's see. Central Indiana reality TV star goes crazy in front of the cameras. This star of Teen Mom is now facing charges. She was made famous by starring in an MTV show on Teen Now, Now think about the reason why she would display this violence on camera. She knows, well, she has the perception that she'll get away with it because after all, you know, society is just focused on looking out for, you know, you know, um, watching for when men commit violence. Uh, let's watch this one here. Oh, hello. What's this elegant machine caressing my milk chocolate skin? It's the best damn razor you've ever seen. That's what. It's the Brown Electric Razor. And this is where we put them to the test. What do you need to test a razor? BrawnTestLabs.com we have new details tonight about Anderson teenage reality star Amber Portwood. In court today, a Madison County judge issued a no contact order, banning the star of MTV's Teen Mom from contacting the father of her child, Gary Shirley. She is still allowed contact with her daughter. Charges were filed against her after an episode of the MTV reality show aired showing Portwood hitting Shirley in front of their two-year-old. Portwood is charged with domestic violence and battery. Last night, her lawyer spoke only to 24-Hour News 8. Is Amber a bad mom? No, I don't think so at all. I, I'm, uh, Amber is, um... Really? Really? Because uh, if a guy had done the same thing and hit the woman, in sp uh, hit the mother in front of the kids, uh, he would be regarded as a bad father uh, pretty quickly, and nobody would feel guilty about labeling him as a bad father. So, um, yes, this bitch, Amber Portwood, is a bad mother. And there's other evidence to, to, uh, to back that up. I think she really has grown up a lot, especially in the past six months. Uh, she's um, a lot tougher than people give her credit for inside. Why did she grow up? Because she's put in jail and she's expected not to be a violent person. You know, any entity that hyper-agency is imposed upon, generally they will behave more responsibly because more is expected of them, and they know, you know, that in order to to, uh, to get along in the whole scheme of things, that they have to cooperate with what's expected of them. And then any group that you generally give hypo-agency to, hypo meaning beneath or, you know, uh, not full agency, uh, they generally behave more irresponsibly uh, uh, just look at how the difference between customers and employees are uh, at a business especially in in, in, uh, in retail or in fast food or anything like that um, <clears throat> the employees generally behave much more responsibly than 
than the customers. Uh, the customers know that they can trash the bathroom. They know that they can complain about their food, even if their food was just fine. Um, they know that they can uh, that they can flaunt their power of being the dissatisfied customer and get free food. They know that they can throw a fit and make a scene in a store and then uh, and then get a discount or a refund or do whatever and their bad behavior is rewarded. Um, you know, it's, it's like, I remember a situation when I used to work at Walmart uh, and people used to pull all that, pull them stunts all the time. Um, and uh, the disposable human doing had to deal with it when he worked at Wendy's. Um, anybody who's worked these types of jobs knows what I'm talking about, so I don't need to say anything more about that. Hi, um, she got a great deal of love for her children. I'm sorry for her child, um, and um, I think she's a very good mom, doing the best she can. Mm-hmm. Portwood turned herself into police on Monday. She'll be back in court next month. Oh. The A teen mother charged with battery because of a TV show was in court today and trying to avoid our cameras. Amber Portwood of Anderson didn't get the news that she wanted, but we asked the tough questions everybody wanted answered. Amber Portwood made a dash for the elevators just outside Madison Superior Court for today, but she couldn't escape us or her past. The video of her beating up the father of her baby on MTV has caused an uproar. Dozens of people called the child abuse hotline to report what they saw on television. How do you feel about that? Portwood faces domestic battery charges and one neglect of a dependent charge. That means three felonies and one misdemeanor. Our Jacqueline Paula Castro asked her about the charges. That's two years ago. I'm 21 now. It's done and over. I've been in therapy for two years. You know, people get angry. Outside the court, a friend of it. Oh really? So so people get angry, and that's just you know uh, a justification for what you did. Well, what about if a guy gets angry at a way at, at the way a woman treats him, and then he punches her face in, or, or uh, does, or or knocks him up against the door, or whatever? Well, no, it goes on Lifetime Television. Uh, it goes on um, Oxygen. Um, it goes on. Uh, it goes on the news. Uh, it's it's constantly brought up again. The dead horse is just repeatedly beaten and beaten again and again. Um, it, it helps boost domestic violence, um, shelter funding, uh, all kind of other stuff. Public service announcements get put up on television. The male gender, the entire male gender, then uh, as a you know uh, as a consequence feels guilty of this. Um, and and the feminists come out in mass and blame men for all this kind of stuff. And violence against men does happen, but it's like I mean, and it does get caught by the news, like in these these rare glimpses. But like you know, and, and violence against men does outrage some people, but it it doesn't get the national response. That violence, that violence against a woman gets. I mean, it is treated differently in, uh, by the public consensus. Because once again, the perception that the man is stronger, therefore he can defend himself, or or that he can withstand the amount of physical aggression coming from a woman. Well, whether or not he's strong enough to withstand the physical aggression coming from coming from a woman does not. D does not negate the fact that violent behavior, even if from a woman, or even if it's coming from a woman, that, you know, that violent behavior, uh, you know, uh, okay, let me rephrase that again. Uh, you know, just because a man might be physically strong enough to endure uh, physical abuse from a woman does not negate the fact that that physical abuse is wrong, even if it's being done by a woman, okay? Um, so let's continue with this. 
Ashley said the couple is on speaking terms, but Judge David Happ rejected a request from Portwood to end the no contact. I wouldn't be on speaking terms. I'd be like, bitch, you're out of my life permanently. Go, like, disappear somewhere. Contact order between Portwood and her then fiance. No contact order between Portwood and her then fiance. Ashley said the couple is on speaking terms, but Judge David Happ rejected a request from Portwood to end the no contact order between Portwood and her then fiance, Gary Shirley. I think it's just too much for her. I think she's just getting more out from all the drama. A trial date has been set for November 16th if she wore out or started up. She and the state cannot reach a plea agreement in 60 days. She's hoping the judge will change the rulings. Why do you think the judge still doesn't want you and uh, your boyfriend around your daughter? It doesn't sound like he's completely opposed to it. And this all got started again when an episode of MTV's Teen Mom showed Amber beating up Gary Shirley in front of their daughter, Leah. Mm, let's see. New pink lemonade. Once again, that music is from the neighbors. They're out there in the car. Need five hour energy? Five hour energy supports the Avon Foundation for Women Breast Cancer Crusade. So I can get the energized feeling I need and support a great cause? <laughs> Interesting. I'm not buying Well, I would never have bought five hour energy, but I'm not going to buy it in the future. You see right here a woman buying a product which is going to. You know, branded you know as pink uh, it, it, and some of the proceeds are going to finance uh, bre breast cancer research uh, with Susan G. Komen and you see this a woman supporting breast cancer awareness pink ribbon feministic woman's cause woman's health woman's concern now let's say if we had a product and it had a light blue ribbon and if a man was buying it and proceeds of the product went to finance prostate cancer um, research, how would that be regarded? Well, because women, you know, like anytime you see these products with the Susan G. Komen pink ribbon and all that, it's always for women. I, I've seen, I, I've seen, and not just seen, I've actually bought batteries. Uh, that were pink, they were Energizer, and they were pink, and uh, part of the proceeds, the profit from the product, went to finance Susan G. Komen and, you know, for breast cancer cure. And I've done that before. I've actually bought those, and, you know, I thought I was helping a good cause, but, you know, uh, breast cancer research is getting uh, uh, the, the majority of funding. Um, right now uh, and I know somebody who recently he's actually my stepdad he just recently um, completed his radiation treatments on his prostate cancer and um, you know I don't see any products at the store they have a uh, light colored blue uh, ribbon on there supporting uh, uh, financial aid for um, you know, for prostate cancer research, I mean, you know, it's just, we need to have some equality here, okay? I mean, once again, this is my, this is the point that me and the disposable human doing and other people make that society still has a consensus in which revolves around protecting the vagina. Uh, and what we mean by that, by vagina, is what makes women unique. Uh, what differentiates uh, women from men, which is primarily reproductive uh, method or capabilities. Um, you know, we all protect um, the nest in which we came from. I guess you can express it that way. Uh, it's still this age-old tribal uh, concern about our own uh, existence. Um... I'm not going to go too much into detail because this video is just going to get way too long, but, yep, there needs to be prostate cancer uh, research through uh, products such as this. I'm sold. 
Pink Lemonade Five Hour Energy. Yeah, and a portion of every sale goes to the Avon Foundation for Women Breast Cancer Crusade. Okay, okay. Well, this is Avon Breast Cancer, but still, the point is, it's it's toward feminine benefit. I'm sold. New Pink Lemonade Five Hour. Uh, of course you are. Of course you're sold. I mean, you're not thinking, hmm, I like pink lemonade, or you're not thinking, hmm, well, five hour energy probably is what I need. No, you're thinking, wow, it benefits women. I'm sold. Exactly. Showing, once again, just more proof of automatic own group preference and social bias in favor of women by women. You know what I'm saying? For energy, get the alert, energized feeling you need, and support breast cancer research and access to care. Tonight, MTV Teen Mom star Amber Portwood fights to get her baby back. The reality star's daughter was yanked away from her just last week by Child Protective Services and deemed a ward of the state. Well, tonight, the baby is back home. Ah, so CPS did get involved, because I heard that what started this whole thing is that Gary Shirley called CPS on Amber Portwood because of how uh, Amber Portwood was behaving or how you know, or how Amber Portwood was treating the child or or something pertaining to the care of the child. So let's see what, uh, I haven't seen this video yet. Oh, is that a good thing? <laughs> oh, we'll let you be the judge. Amber was in hot water after she was shown beating down her baby daddy, Gary Shirley, on camera on the hit MTV show, The Violet Smackdown, sparked a police investigation. Amber was charged with two felonies in her Indiana hometown, and she lost custody of her two-year-old, Leah. Here's footage of the brawl that aired... It's about time that she lost custody for being a bad mother. It's about time. Yeah, she fucking earned the loss of custody. I mean, if a guy would have behaved like that, uh, not only would he lose custody, he'd probably be in prison. Okay, and, and I think Amber Poor would get off a little bit easier than the typical guy would get off. This season on MTV's Teen Mom. Check it out. I'll see you later. <laughs> Get off of me. You need to shut your mouth. Camera. I'll bring your ass to court. Say that. You want to me? Yeah. Amber, quit. Huh? Amber, you need to get off me. Amber? No, I swear to God I would. Ooh, what did I notice? Now, you see in this video here, he's wearing, he's dressed differently, and so is she. Indicating that this video right here was recorded at a different time than this video right here. But yet they both show her displaying violence toward him and he's not doing anything to provoke it. Matter of fact, he's trying to de-escalate the violence. He's trying to calm her down and she keeps getting more violent with him. This is two different scenarios of the same behavior on two different instances because you can see the scenery is different and the clothing is different, and even the hairstyle is different on both people. This shows a pattern that Amber Portwood is an at the Amber Portwood is an abusive, violent person, and she is a bad mother, especially because she does this stuff in front of her kid. She is a bad mother, and she should be banned from her child's life, just like various men are banned from being a part of their child's life for equivalent crime. Suck it up, bitches. We're gonna have some real equality. I wish I was bigger than you. I'd One more hit. One more hit. What? Amber, quit. Huh? Amber, you need to get off me. Amber? No, I swear to God, I wish I was bigger than you. I'd beat your ass. One more hit. One more hit. What? You hit me? No. I am at the edge. Do you want to get punched in your face? You want to hit me then? Right. Are you done? Amber, are you done? Are you seriously done? Thank you. Don't you ever 
Come here again, you fat piece of Oh, uh, Brown. You stay the out of my damn house. I am. You are trash. Okay. You are so lucky and you better watch your damn back. <sighs> And she just made a threat, and as he's leaving, you can see, there's the back of his head. As he's leaving, she's kicking him. Apparently, what looks like down some stairs, uh, she makes threats, and um, what else does she say? You're trash. Okay. You are so lucky, and you better watch your damn back. <sighs> Amber, are you done? Edge, do you want to get punched in your face? Yep. Amber, quit. Huh? Amber, you need to get off me. Amber? No, I swear to God, I wish I was bigger than you. I'd beat hit. your ass. One more hit. One more hit, what? You hit me? No. I am at the edge. Do you want to? Wait, we got to see this again. Amber? No, I swear to God, I wish I was bigger than you. I'd one more hit. One more hit. What? You hit me? No. I am at the edge. Do you want to get punched in your face? You want to hit me then? She says, or what? You're going to hit me? I think she's trying to provoke him to hit her, and then she will play the victim afterward because one of these videos, she she calls 911 that very same night or evening or day and <clears throat> she pretends to be the victim of his violence are you done push me down the stairs amber are you done are you seriously done thank you don't you ever come here again you fat piece of oh, <sighs> you stay the out of my damn house i am you are trash and look, he's not fighting back or defending himself or anything because he knows if he even balls up his fist and even display, and if he even clenches his fingers to make the shape of a fist, he knows that the system and feminist and the public biased will label him as the aggressor even if he's trying to defend himself from further violence. He knows exactly how the public biased is. He knows he has to let her hit him and walk out with his tail between his legs and go out in shame like that if he wants to keep his ass out of jail. Okay. You are so lucky and you better watch your because because he knows that even if she punches him 20 times and he punches her once she can claim that she is the victim of abuse and that he's been doing this for quite a while and that therefore she's just trying to defend herself the whole battered wife syndrome or whatever. Damn back. I might need to go to therapy just because I was subjected to watching that. That is scary stuff. Dylan Howard, senior executive editor of Radar... Exactly. It is scary stuff. And as you've seen, it was displayed. That type of be behavior, that disturbing behavior, was displayed by your gender, not mine. Yeah. Did your bubble get popped of believing that women were sweetly innocent? Hmm. Seems like you learned something here. Or a line. I am absolutely appalled and aghast that Child Protective Services gave the baby back to that woman? <laughs> Why are you surprised? They, they typically do that because CPS, along with other groups, are influenced by feminists. Exactly. This news, this news anchor right here is thinking logically. Like a typical person should think. Or like what would be called a normal person you know, should think. Um, <clears throat> I mean... Yeah, this woman is right. The child should not be given back to the violent mother. But that's the way our family court system works. You know? It's, it's in the child's best interest to be with the mother. We'll just deal with it, okay? Meh. Yeah. Women have 
I mean, who would have thought Amber Portwood would have done these things? I'm sure she blended in as a sweetly innocent girl, fit the stereotype of all submissive and wonderful and sugar and spice and everything nice. And as seen, she displays a pattern of violence in front of her child. But aghast that Child Protective Services gave the baby back to that woman? Well, Jane, for the third time in seven days, little Leah, the two-year-old daughter at the center of this custody fight, was placed back into the hands of MTV star Amber Portwood. Now, as we understand it at Radar Online, the reason that Leah was taken away from Amber in the first place last week and placed as a ward of the state and placed into the custody of her father, uh, Gary Shirley, was because the living conditions at that home were not suitable. In fact, the child did not even have an adequate bed to sleep in. So, as part of that, the court decided to take custody away from Amber, give it to Gary, but when those conditions were met, the baby has been moved back into the custody of Amber Portwood. This, of course, set against the backdrop of MTV. And the big question in my mind is an issue of culpability because we heard in that 911 call Amber Portwood saying that she was the subject of a probe that happened six months ago. So there was a window of six months before uh, this issue was in fact elevated to Child Protective Services. And the television producers behind this did nothing for the safety of that child. Well, uh, I, I, you know, let's leave the show aside, but Rob... Don't be surprised. I mean, it's that whole biased in favor of the female. It's like, well, the vagina's always right and cater to women's fragile self-esteem or else you're an asshole. Man. Well... Yeah, I mean, it really, it just says that women have this fragile self-esteem and this this lowly existence, and that they're like just these pitiful creatures that can't seem to rise up and overcome a challenge. So, so therefore, everything has to be brought down to accommodate a woman. You know, uh, just like when I was in the army. You know, women didn't have to do as much push-ups as men. Uh, they got to do push-ups on their knees. They didn't have to run as much as a man. Um. Uh, you look at all these other things. Well, with the equal like equal pay amendment, and all this pay gap kind of shit. You know, back in the seventies, we already went through that equal pay for equal work stuff. You know, and women still make choices in which don't earn them as much money as men, and yet they still bitch and fuss about not having as much money as men. So what we need to do, well, we'll have more legislation. And, and what are they going to do? End up paying women 30 cents more an hour just to make up for the perceived, you know, 28 cent pay gap or whatever stupid crap. I mean, men work more hours and well, just look what happened with me and my former girlfriend. Okay. Uh, during most of the relationship, she didn't work. She only worked for five months, and even then, she she only got like 15 hours a week or whatever. I mean, maybe 20, if, if that. Um, and, um, you know, and her biggest paychecks were only like, I think on a good month, she would earn $400 a month, you know, at her job. Uh, she chose housekeeping and all that because she said that's the only type of work she can do. You know, she's capable of doing or whatever the case. She didn't make very much money at you know at a hotel. So you know who had all the extra money to pay for things because I worked more hours and worked a job that was more rewarding and you know but but you know every bit frustrating and all that. Yeah, I, I you know I paid for the apartment. I paid for the electric bill. I paid for the phone. I paid for the internet. I paid for gas in the car. I paid car insurance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She lived here. And, you know, and then, then she decided to get pregnant and get out of working a job by getting pregnant. Quits that job and all that. Um, after only working there for five months. Uh, gets pregnant. Gets on food stamps. Um, so we're living off of the, the food, the food stamps, you know, for food anyway. Uh, of course, I paid taxes into for more than a decade. Um, <clears throat> and, um, 
So yeah, so in effect, we're living off my tax dollars. I'm working the, the job. I'm paying all this stuff. I'm going to this job, getting all pissed off at how the customers treat me and stuff. She's at home, playing on freaking Farmville all day. You know, Facebook games and all that. Uh, then later, it was Dragons of Atlantis. Playing this stuff all day, has unlimited phone, uh, unlimited phone calling to anywhere in the continental United States um, through the phone plan. So she can call up her, her friend in Tennessee or whatever, and it's all fine. And, um, you know, we live in town, so she really wanted to. She can go downtown and see festivals and stuff. Uh, had a bunch of video game systems that she could have played. A whole bunch of video games for various different systems. Uh, a whole big box of VHS movies, a bunch of DVD movies. Uh, we had the internet. She could have watched a bunch of stuff on YouTube. And even later on, we had cable TV. Um, you know, Nickelodeon. She loved to watch SpongeBob and all that. We just had all these nice things, and she just all she had to do was just sit around all day. Oh well, she got tired of that because she wasn't partying with her friends, basically, or playing Guitar Hero with her friends, or whatever else. And that sort of thing. And oh, she's such a prisoner. Why? I mean, didn't she live the luxury? I mean, comparatively, I mean, you know, I paid for, I, I paid not just my way, but hers. And all this other stuff. She's just never happy. And that sort of thing. I mean, like, I didn't even expect her to earn money. You know? It's like if she just kept me company and just basically put out then you know then and, and you know then it then it was an all right arrangement you know and of course we'd play some video games but she was into the newer games and i was into the older games and all that and although toward the beginning of the re relationship she said she was into the older games and all that but apparently not as much as i was you know nes super nes sega genesis you know uh that that was me but no she'd end up playing a bunch of stuff on playstation 2 and gamecube Oh, an Xbox, of course. She loved Fable. And, um... Anyway. Um... Yeah. So she had it pretty good here, but, oh, that's not good enough. She got on Facebook and bitch about how bored she is and how she can't wait till I get home from work. And that sort of thing. She always wanted me to drive her around and take her to festivals and outings and all kind of other shit because she didn't have a car. And all this other stuff and it's like well you know it's like it's my day off I'd rather kind of just relax you know because I am on my feet for anywhere from 7 to 10 hours a day um and uh of course uh also wear boots because that's the only way to get steel toe generally uh because I lift furniture carry TVs furniture do carry out for customers sometimes operate a pallet jack and just you know it's there are some dangers to a person's feet and but anyway you know she she couldn't stand being on her feet for four hours and there'd be times when I'm on my feet for up to ten you know on any given day uh, in the workplace and she just she says she just wasn't meant for, you know, working a job, and she described herself as the grasshopper from the whole Aesop's fable, and described me and my family as the worker ant. Mm. Anyway, yeah, her mom don't have very much of a work history either. And, uh, so let's continue on with this. Producers behind this did nothing for the safety. Uh, this issue was in fact elevated to Child Protective Services and the television producers behind this did nothing for the safety of that child. Well, uh, I, I, you know, let's leave the show aside, but Rob Shooter, I just don't understand something. I do not understand how we all saw how violent that woman is. Okay, the tape doesn't lie. I don't care whether she cleaned up her house and got a bed for the baby. It's not about housekeeping. All right, maybe I'll go to Judy Koreansky on this. It's about what kind of person this, this, this woman is. And I can't imagine Child Protective Services giving a child back to that bundle of, of rage. I can because of the social bias 
uh, in society, uh, the gender bias in society against men in favor of women. I mean, uh, why, why are you surprised? I mean, and I'm talking to this, you know, hypothetically talking to this news reporter. I'm just making, I, I act, I'm pretending like I'm talking to this news reporter, but I'm actually just making a point to you, the viewers. Like, why, why should this person, I mean, why should this, well, she's not a news reporter, she's actually a news anchor. Uh, she doesn't go out in the field, she just sits there on camera. Anyway, why, why is this person right here surprised? I mean, see, this person is thinking properly. It's like, yeah, you don't, you know, it's like, it's not good to put a child in the, in the custody of a violent person. This person is making a very good point. But at the same time, Look at how how biased society is in terms of gender, and it's been that way for thousands of years. We never we never escaped our our um, our biological programming, uh, our our culture and stuff from caveman days. We've never really escaped it. I mean, just because we got Blu-ray players and Xboxes and you know TVs that are only a half inch thick. And because we got skyscrapers and helicopters and space stations, it doesn't mean that we've escaped our whole primitive drives and and ancestral memories. It doesn't mean that we've escaped it. It's meant that we've come a long way in terms of technological advancements, yes. But we've not really matured a whole lot in terms of gender relations. I mean, we still have a lot of this stuff hard hardwired in us to take care of the women even at the cost of men. And feminism has failed to implement equality in, in terms of equality of treatment between the genders. Uh, especially in the public eye. Uh, feminists cannot do their actions without at the same time using misandry to achieve their goals. You know, the hatred of men, misandry. Uh, so many people know what misogyny is because they hear the word like how many times over and over again. And then when a person uses the word misandry, it's either ignored or disregarded or... Uh, or it's rebuttaled, or whatever. Somebody made the point that, you know, if if misandry supposedly does not exist, then he's going to regard misogyny as if it doesn't exist, and I totally uh, agree with that. Yeah, because, hey, ever since I was a kid, I was sold on the whole um, cause of equality, you know, treating people equal. Um, and it's hard for me to get off of that, you know what I'm saying? Because I sacrificed so much of my desires, and, and I, I, yeah, I, I really did strive to, to live up to the goals that were expected of me, that I was indoctrinated with uh, from the time I was a child. Uh, yet I am suffering from a collapse of a belief system. I mean, I was taught to perceive women as being infallible. Oh... 2011 marked the collapse of that belief system. Oh, people don't seem to know that for the first 31 years of my life that I viewed women as superior to men and I put women up on a pedestal and admired them for decades. Uh, I mean, I sustained that for decades because that's how I was brought up. That's how my perception of how things should be. That's how it was formed from when I was a kid. And then I finally learned that women are not exactly what they portray themselves to be. Sure, there might be a few good women out there, but my point is, not all women are innocent. And you'd be surprised how many of them show cracks in their mask of a sweet innocent girl. <laughs> Let's continue with this. I think it's, it's, it's a it's shocking. Bridge and very, very distressing. I agree with you, Jane. This is a this is a young girl who is in a cycle of abuse really, as reportedly she has been abused when she was young, is just repeating it. 
to out to her boyfriend and I'm very frightened for the young child because yes. unfortunately that gets that gets repeated. Right. She's also supposedly stole her boyfriend. She would kill herself if he didn't come back. No, for a no. young child to even be exposed to that makes me even more concerned psychiatrically. Okay. There's thoughts that she may be bipolar, she needs psychiatric help, she's supposedly getting it, but it's not good enough. Rob Shooter, your reaction to this? It's, it's horrifying, it's, it's heartbreaking is what it is. When you see this... No, it's simply a reality check. That's what it is, a reality check. This dude in the green shirt, are you getting your bubble popped about women being sweetly innocent? Because I got my bubble popped a while back. Okay. Well, this video is dated from 2010, but still the point is, I mean, look at him. He's, he's old enough. He, he could have known better, but again, you know, maybe he was just, you know, he, he just believe the lie that women portray themselves to be sweetly innocent all the time. Young lady behaving like this and think of her as anybody's mommy, it really breaks my heart. And remember, things are only going to get worse for this young lady because the one thing that she did have in her life was this reality show that she was earning a fortune from. She's not on next season. She's no longer a teen mom. So next year, MTV will look for new teen... Where did that audio go out? Alright. Alright. Just gotta play a few more. So, so it's not going to give you any more trouble or anything because it's running Linux, right? I mean, like, gosh, get off the Microsoft drug. I mean, gosh, Microsoft is just... Their track record is just very horrible, and, you know, and it's another topic. and I can tell you, one of the teen moms featured on the show, Amber Portwood, is now under investigation for domestic violence. Amber was caught on camera kicking and punching her on-again, off-again fiancé, and at times their child was in the same room. Take a look at this. Amber? No! I swear to God, I wish I was bigger than you. I'd beat your ass. One more hit. One more hit? What? You gonna hit me? No. Do you wanna get punched in your face? You wanna hit me then? Alright. Are you done? Are you seriously done? Obviously, oh. this is really disturbing. Well, along with the police getting involved, she'll be... Of, corp of course it is, but her bad, behavior, her bad behavior will be rewarded by giving her custody back of her child uh, so then she can then c continue to have that meal ticket, which is probably the reason why she had kids in the first place, especially at such a young age. I mean, it proves that she's seeking validation. And, okay, uh, for a male to be validated um, in society, he generally needs to uh, to be with a woman. Uh, that's, that, that's, you know, um, uh, he's expected to be with a woman and keep her satisfied and all that and be the provider protector and, uh, and, and die if necessary for that. Now, a woman, all she has to do is spread her legs, pop out a kid. And that's how she gets validated, by being a mother. He gets validated by being a protector provider who serves the interest of a woman. She gets validated by getting pregnant and becoming a mother. Okay, she doesn't even have to raise the kid alone. She's got an army of, um, 
of social services that are willing to help her if she feels necessary, all paid for by his gender tax, because cause men earn more money, because <laughs> men earn more money than women. That's the whole myth, right? Well, you know, in that case, then they're putting a higher tax bracket and therefore pay more taxes as part of their social obligation to society, which then goes to bitches like her, uh, the, uh, like Amber Portwood or, or any other poop mouth who decides to get pregnant at a young age like that instead of actually work a job and contribute to society. I mean, we're 7 billion pl uh, people on this planet. I mean, like, we, we don't need people popping out kids all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we need some to replenish the, the, the flock, but, like, you know what I'm saying? We don't need this massive influx of, like, single mothers. And, uh, uh, no, well, I guess maybe that's how it balances out in the end, you know, because... Because, you know, single mothers uh, uh, raise the majority of serial killers and all that uh, because they, like, they have, like, no father figure to, like, relate to or whatever and they just go ape shit and kill people and all that. And, um, yeah, so then with more serial killers raised by single mothers comes a population control method of serial killers thinning the herd and all that. So I guess in some weird, sick, twisted way, single mothers balance out things in the overall whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> um, so anyway, um, yeah, and, um, so she's got an army of people willing to help her, uh, any, anybody, you know, she's got, she's, you know, she can get free daycare, maybe, if she plays her cards right, uh, all kind of opportunities open up to her just because she got pregnant. Uh, because the state wants to make sure the kid is taken care of because that's a future taxpayer. Okay. Um, so anyway. Um, so she'll get custody anyway. And this guy will probably have to pay child support to this bitch who actually abused him because that's the way our fucked up country goes. Um. Uh, you know, not just America that's fucked up. It's England and other Western countries, and even Eastern countries like India are getting fucked up like this now. And all that, and it's all in the name of progress. Yeah, destabilizing society by by revolving society's uh, perspective uh, based on something as fickle as the female uh, uh, psyche. Listen, I cannot tell you Child Protective Services is investigating the situation. Bob Showbiz and I can now tell you Child Protective Services isn't... Are you seriously done? Obviously, oh. this is really disturbing. Well, along with the police getting involved, Showbiz and I can now tell you Child Protective Services is investigating the situation. Ken, is it just time that Amber's kid is taken away? I mean, this is not right. Yeah, I mean, she's what we call a POW, a piece of work. Um, <laughs> clearly, and anyone who's seen the show knows this. But the thing is, is that, I mean, really, I don't want to make light of this, but... They need fiance protective services to get into this. I mean, she really is abusive, not just physically, but verbally to this yeah. guy. It's outrageous what she gets away with. She's very controversial back home in Indiana. There's a bunch of local people who just want her to move out of town. She is not popular at all. And now with the child, I mean, it's almost a two-year-old, you know, just a little kid who's witnessing this. A lot of okay. people are disturbed by it. It raises a lot of serious it's questions. It's criminal to subject a child to this. She goes berserk with the child in the room at times. And, and you know, just last night, MTV aired the Teen Mom Reunion special. On the show, Dr. Drew Pinsky sat down with Amber, tried to talk some sense into her, asked her what she was thinking when she punched and kicked the father of her child. I mean, I knew what I was doing, but I don't rem when I watch it back, I don't remember it being like that. I don't remember that, like, being so much. I, and it's like, I feel like I you know, it's probably because your real personality came out and was manifesting itself, you know. And no, of course you're not going to remember because you don't. Your ass don't want to go to jail. I mean, you don't want to have consequences, so you just cry and show more fucking tears and all this shit, so everybody will feel sympathy for your vagina. And you just show who you really are. Just some pathetic. You're just some pathetic weakling. You know, I mean, like, like what what moral character do you have? I mean, you just go around hitting people. And, you know, I'm talking to Amber, you know, 
I'm just talking about Amber Portwood here. I mean, look, I don't remember being like that. I mean, oh, I've seen it, and I just don't remember it happening like that. So is she trying to say that it didn't happen like that? Well, she can't. She can't disprove the tape and all that. But, like, what it is pointing out is that she has a hidden personality. Now, you can see she's capable of pretending to be a nice girl. But then she'll just haul off and beat the shit out of some dude, next, you know, and just display the type of behavior that her gender portrays the male gender for being. And this is why I don't trust women, because most women are capable of this. Okay? We get to hear about men being generalized as violent savages who just want to rape and kill shit, and that, that stereotype gets to be thrown around with impunity. You know, there's no consequences for, for generalizing the male gender like that. And yet, we as a society, we act like this girl's behavior is just an isolated incident. No. This is just one particular person who, whose behavior came to the surface for us to witness. Okay? I hit him one time, and I remember that, like, being so much. I do, but I don't rem when I watch it back, I don't remember it being like that. I don't remember that, like, being so much. I, and it's like, I feel like I hit him one time, and I watch him, like, hitting him, like, multiple times. Uh-huh, multiple times. Amber also admitted to being out of it during her violent verbal outburst. And like I say, we know that some of the violent episodes were caught by MTV cameras. In fact, the baby has been in the room during at least one of them. We've seen that. I think if a baby were ever in harm's way, that MTV should have jumped in, should have intervened. Maria, do you agree? You know, I think that if they're in a difficult position, but they should have at least taken the child out of the room, I think. I mean, I am absolutely horrified. I have chills all the way down my body. I'm no, what they probably did is they probably trusted the woman's judgment. Well, the woman, she is in charge of the situation, and, and she's the mother. She has the final say, and well, if the situation was bad, then I'm sure she would have taken the kid out of the room, and so it didn't witness this stuff, and mur, 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 because women are the authority on stuff, and women, you know, we just got to trust their guidance. I am absolutely horrified. I have chills all the way down my body. I'm sick to my stomach watching this. This girl is only upset because she got caught and she's exactly. now seeing the ramifications of this and she's being investigated. Gary, exactly. call me. There are girls out there that will treat you well, that will not abuse you. It is absolutely not a position you need to be in. And it's... Are, are you sure? Are, are, like, like, okay, prove to me. Prove to me that there's a good girl who's going to go for a good guy. I mean, like... I mean, no, no, they're, they're not going to go for him because they don't think he's attractive and, you know, or, or maybe he don't got as much money as they want. No, I, I, see, once again, here's the shit I keep talking about. Yes, I agree that good people should get with good people, but like, will it actually happen? I mean, sometimes it does, but like, I mean, does it happen as much as it should or, has happen, or does it happen as much as people would like to see it happen? No, it doesn't. Um, now, I, I want you to hear this here, because it's very important. Treat you well, that will not abuse you. It, she's now seeing the ramifications of this, and she's being investigated. Gary, call me. There are girls out there that will treat you well. That C Call her. Like, for, she wants Gary to call, you know, Gary Shirley, the victim of Amber Portwood's domestic violence. You know, she wants him to call her you know, the person on the show, for what reason? Like, to get with her? Whatever. Or maybe she's going to hook, have pity on him and hook him up with somebody. My stomach watching this. This girl yeah. is only upset because she got caught and she's now seeing the ramifications of this and she's being investigated. Gary, call me. There are girls out there that will treat you well, that will not abuse you. It is absolutely not a position you need to be in. And it's sad because he's taking it and it's absolutely horrific. I mean, this child needs to... Of course, of course he's accepting the violence that is displayed upon him. Does he have any other recourse? 
Oh. He, he knows that he cannot defend himself. He knows that, like, he's basically trapped. That he, like... And if he claims that he's a victim, then he will be uh, regarded as less than a man because he can't defend himself. Or that he'll be, like, somehow invalidated because he'll be perceived as a wuss. Or whatever. And then 